The fan inlays begin by making a template and I did this on paper first to get a shape that I like and then I uh, transferred it to this piece of uh, plywood and then I transferred that to this piece of pine and on the piece of pine I took one half of the oval and divided it up into six equal segments and you'll notice that the ends are equal not necessarily the angles are equal that's an important point and then I took from that and determined what size piece of uh, holly veneer I would need so that I could get two segments from each piece and now I'm going to sand shade each edge of this veneer. The process of shading couldn't be any simpler. I have here a hot plate with a small cast iron skillet and about a quarter inch of very fine sand. I got it at our craft store. Uh, the finer the better because it allows for a more uniform graduation on the shading. And I've had some pieces in here for a minute or so and this is what I'm after. Uh, there's no hint of charring but I have a nice dark edge and it's uniformly graduated into the field and that, that would be perfect and that's what I'm going to aim for. I'm getting ready now to assemble one of the fans and I have my tools here at hand. I have a roll of veneer tape, a spray bottle to wet that veneer tape, and a, a, a plain blade that I'm going to use as a chisel. And I'll start with uh, a segment here and I'll put the uh, shaded edge against that layout line and allow it to extend past the center line just a little bit so that when I cut I come up with a very sharp point there and with the uh, flat side of the plain iron facing towards the piece I want to keep just use this as a big chisel so to speak cut it and don't press too hard because uh, you don't want to cut into your pine too much if you had a lot of these to make uh, and you make an indent there along that cut line it starts to uh, uh, crush the wood instead of cut it because it, it flexes into those cuts and uh, they don't come up as clean. I'm going to keep this piece for right there in that little uh, segment there. And now placing a shaded edge against the non-shaded edge and lining it up on the pattern so that it's in a perfect alignment. Take the plain blade and again cut a segment. And uh, holding that one in place, do the same thing with the next one. See if I have that right? Yeah. It's kind of kind of frustrating in a way because they move around. Every time you move your fingers, they move. But just uh, be patient and work with it. Now I'm going to take a piece of the veneer tape and uh, lightly mist it with water. I want to rub that uh, water around a little bit, don't want a lot of excess, but I don't want to uh, overdo it with my finger because that'll remove some of the adhesive from this veneer tape. Place the pieces on here, keeping them in the same orientation, making sure that they all come up clean at the points there, and that I have a shaded to unshaded edge. Uh, that one's not right, let me pull that off of there. Okay, that looks good. And now while I'm here, I'm just going to cut away the piece of tape that's overhanging. Now I'm going to continue on here, keeping the shaded edge there. Again, starting off with the shaded edge. Now I'm going to assemble the two halves here to make the whole uh, fan inlay. And, uh, well, that, that fit together without any work. Usually I have to do a little bit of planing with on, on one of them or the other uh, by taking the edge and letting it uh, hang off there just a little bit and running a sharp block plane down the edge to uh, refine it so that they mate perfectly but uh, this one didn't need that so now another piece of veneer tape I got carried away with the water there for real that time and then just making sure we have the segments perfectly lined up. Now, there'll be a small oval of black in the center here that would hide any minor inaccuracies where those points come together, but I always like to have them be as uh, precise as possible. Now again, I'll go put this under a board while, they, uh, while it dries out a little bit, and I'll come back and uh, do the next step. I took the uh, same template and drew around it and that uh, now gives me a line uh, representing the oval 
and I'm going to take this gouge here, it's a number 8, uh, 18 millimeter, and I'm going to cut the ends here with those little scallops, and I'm going to place the gouge exactly where the line crosses the intersection between the two uh, segments of the fan at each edge, and push straight down, and do the same thing here, and the more accurate you are with this, the better, because we want nice sharp points. Now this last segment here near the top, if I use that gouge, see I'd be cutting into it, almost cutting it away. So I'm going to switch now to a, uh, a number 7 gouge. This is a number 7 20 millimeter gouge. The uh, width is important as long as it's able to span from edge to edge. Just carefully cut those. Let's see, did I cut that one right? Yep, that looks good. And now the waste will come free, and we have the start of the fan. And even at this stage, it's uh, quite impressive. Now I'm going to uh, cut the scallops to fill in those ends from a piece of black dyed veneer. And I've cut the veneer so it's just a little bit narrower than the width of the chisel, so I don't get any splitting at the ends and I'm going to place the uh, gouge on here in such a way that I have sharp points at the ends of the uh, little segment because that's important for the next step and in between each cut I'm going to square up the ends with a chisel and I'm going to make of course some with the number seven gouge and most of them with the number eight and uh, then I'll go and glue these in I placed the fan on two more pieces of that uh, wetted veneer tape and I'm going to place the segments in here and these two here at the top and the two at the bottom are going to need to be trimmed just ever so slightly to fit here. I'm going to take and we'll eyeball it and make a little cut in one just so that they can come up to a good sharp point there and fit in accurately. I've let that fan dry for just a little while in the clamps again, and I'm going to take this, which is a uh, number 8 10 millimeter gouge. I'm going to carefully line it up here, centering it in the middle of the fan, and punching as straight down as I can. Flip it around here and do the same thing, making sure that the cuts line up accurately. And that'll remove a little section here of the center. And you'll notice when you look at it that the um, cut is kind of tapered because of the bevel on the gouge, but that's okay because as long as I cut a well-sized piece out of this uh, contrasting veneer, it will work perfectly because what you're actually seeing here is the back of the inlay. There'll be a piece of veneer glued on the back, so the front is the uh, smaller of it and it will fit in there perfectly when you take the uh, uh, tape off the other side. Now I'm going to take a little piece of that tape, wet it here, place it there and take the little football shaped piece and see how it fits and that's that's perfect right there and I have here a piece of veneer I don't even know what it is but it's a very stable ribbon stripe veneer and I'm going to brush on a thick coat of hide glue this is hot hide glue Make sure I get good even coverage here. I've got a little thin in a couple spots. I'm going to brush a little extra on there. It's already starting to gel, but that's not a problem because I've taken this piece of wood here and I've heated it up in the oven. I have the oven set on about 170. And I'm going to take that and place that between or on top of a sheet of aluminum foil. And I'm going to take the fans and place them face down into that. Now I'm going to hold the, another piece of aluminum foil over that. Take this other one, and it's still good and warm. Now I'm going to put 
some clamps across there. I don't have to have a lot of clamping pressure, just enough to keep them in firm contact until that glue cools. I used office push pins to hold the uh, fans flat while they dried overnight so they didn't curl up. And from this step until they're actually glued in place, I'm not going to allow them to be unrestrained. I'm going to either have them tacked to a board like this or I'm going to have them clamped between boards because uh, I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's considerable warping. Not, not a lot, but if they were unrestrained, they might warp up and that hide glue is extremely brittle and it would uh, tend to fracture them if I had to press them back flat. I've cut free the fan and uh, I lightly sanded the surface because uh, there's a minor amount of hide glue that got on there and a pencil line, for some reason, just won't show up all that well on hide glue. And now I'm going to take my template and I have to make sure I have it in the same orientation because it might not be perfectly symmetrical. It should be close. Well, that just happens to be right, right there. And now draw around that to give me my cut line. And now I cut these on the bandsaw. Here is the piece after being sawn on the bandsaw, and you can see the generous amount that I left around those pencil lines. And now I'm going to file that to shape, and here I'm going to use my judgment more than follow those lines exactly. It's more important that the uh, ends of the segment come right out to the edge of the inlay than it is to have a perfectly true uh, oval shape. Now, of course, you're going to have to use your judgment there. You can't have any obvious discrepancy. So it's going to be a little bit of uh, uh, file in a while sitting back and look at it and uh, see what the results are. And in this area right here, when I'm filing, I'm going kind of against the grain, so I have to be a little bit more careful that I don't chip something out. It's not a big concern, but it's something to think about. really good. Now they have the, the uh, little scallop pieces come up nice with the edge. They're uh, uniform in shape and size around the perimeter as much as they can be with the inherent shape of it. And uh, that's looking really good there.